Mr. Ross, we are prepared to hear your final statement. Before we do, I have one last question. Mr. Ross, you say you're a changed man and you care about the truth, but I want to know if you're capable of telling the truth. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I suggest that you consider your answer very carefully, because as far as I'm concerned, your answer will determine whether or not you become a lawyer. During your time at Pearson Specter Lit, did anyone there have knowledge of the fact that you were a fraud? Mr. Ross, did anyone else know? I knew. And if you're looking for a scalp, you can have mine. But I was under the impression that this hearing was not about my old firm, but whether or not Mr. Ross should be a lawyer. I say he should. It doesn't matter what you say. He's already had someone testify for him. I'm not here to talk about him. I'm here to talk about someone else. Someone else has nothing to do I'd with I'd like this. to hear this. 15 years ago, a young woman was arrested for illegally obtaining prescription drugs. Turns out she had chronic pain and didn't want to drop out of med school, possibly never to return. So she stole a couple of prescription pads from the hospital where she was interning, a crime with a mandatory sentence of seven years. But instead of throwing the book at her, the prosecuting attorney showed mercy. Had the charges knocked down to a misdemeanor, recommended probation, and sealed the records. That's a touching story, but I don't see what a random attorney has to do with these proceedings. She's not talking about a random attorney. She's talking about me. Just because I showed compassion once doesn't mean he deserves it now. Maybe he doesn't. But that young woman is now an ER doctor. She saves lives. And the world's a better place because you saved hers. Thank you, Miss Pearson. Mr. Ross. I don't think I can add anything to that. I've made my case. I leave the choice to you. Then this hearing has concluded. We will deliberate and let you know our decision by day's end. Thank you. So what do we do now? They said they would let us know by the end of the day. So we wait. Well, it is the end of the day, which means... It doesn't mean anything, Lewis. Whatever's going on in there, Seidel's gonna fight like hell. It's not gonna make a difference. She's never gonna change her mind. I think she will. What do you mean? I mean that story wasn't any old story, and that woman wasn't really a woman, it was a man named Joseph O'Neill. And it was Walter Sampson's godson. So she did call in a favor? Yes, she did. Then we need to get her kicked off that board. No, Harvey, we don't. Because I didn't fly all the way down here to strong arm that woman. And I know the story of the wind and the sun. What the hell are you talking about? She's talking about Aesop's fable, which basically says that if you want a man to take off his coat, you don't blow it off. You make him feel warm and he'll take it off on his own. That's not a strategy, it's a prayer. Louis, I already admitted that I knew about Mike and I reminded her of her own compassion. That's the best we're going to do. You know they could disbar you for that. In New York, they might. In Chicago, nobody's gonna care. Thank you, Jessica. Don't thank me. Thank Harvey. He's the one that called me. Saido. Hello. I'll tell him. Thanks for calling. You're in. <laughs> oh my god, it happened. <laughs> I'm gonna go get us some champagne. Thank you so much. Thank you for flying in. I wouldn't miss this for the world. <laughs>